Check one, one, two, testing one, check, check. It's going to be a minute and you're going to hear it. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, there's always a delay. There's always a delay, remember a minute delay.
so you okay? You can you handle it? No? We'll call it a day. Is that everybody that stands for? Yes, sir. Go ahead, Rolf. Well, good morning, and thank you all for joining us uh, here today. Um, so if everybody can come in and uh, take your seats, we can begin. Um, I'd like to remind everybody uh, to turn off your cell phones. Please take this opportunity to silence them. Also, in the extremely unlikely event of an emergency, please locate the exit signs and vacate toward the back of the building and exit the halls to the nearest exit. Uh, restrooms, likewise, outside the back, either side, uh, down the hall. I want to remind you that taking of pictures is actually encouraged, <laughs> uh, particularly selfies um, <laughs> with the honorees and, and some of us that work here. That would be great. Uh, Mr. Secretary, friends, colleagues, special guests, again, thank you all for joining us uh, here today to honor our friends and esteemed colleagues Dr. William Bill Bookless, Dr. Chris Fall, Dr. Rita Barronwall. I see you, Rita. Are you, are you texting already? <laughs> she's, she's streaming this uh, live. Uh, and Mr. Lane uh, Genetowski, um, welcome you, congratulations, and thank you for joining us as we swear them in. Our newest Senate-confirmed leaders in national security, nuclear security, nuclear energy, energy innovation, and science. And we are especially pleased to have family members, which eat each of our honorees today. Uh, joining Bill Bookless today is his daughter, Alex, and son-in-law, Michael William Turner, Jr. Joining Chris Fall is his lovely wife, Sandy Wilkness, uh, Dr. Sandy Wilkness. Uh, joining Dr. Rita Barronwall is her husband, Peter Johnson Sanjay, her very tall son and rising senior in high school, and Amia, her daughter. Joining Lane is his wife, Robin Schumann. So let us welcome them with a round of applause. You know, our program today is an expression of commitment to professionalism, to dedication, to service, and it reminds us, for each of us, to renew our commitment to serve our nation and to serve one another. As all four of our honorees can attest, this ceremony has indeed been a long time coming. But you have met, our honorees have met these months of waiting between the nomination and confirmation, with patience, with incredible professionalism, and with an unwavering commitment to serve. Among all four of you, you will be leading some of the most critical and exciting work ongoing within our Department of Energy. You were nominated to your positions for a reason, your intellect, your experience, and most importantly, your vision. That's what we need today at the department. We need them in the leadership positions of the offices that you have chosen to serve. We're excited to have you here and to see the work that you will do. We're confident in your abilities and your leadership, and you have the full support of leadership and our entire organization behind you. So let us begin our program this morning. Uh, this morning, we are privileged to have the posting of the colors by the U.S. Army Military District of Washington Honor Guard, stationed right across the river at Fort Myer, uh, which was the site, uh, Mr. Secretary, as you know, of the first military aircraft flight. Uh, this command serves both the ceremonial tasks as well as a combat role in the defense of the National Capital Region. And Mr. Secretary, you'll be pleased to note when I asked 
the four colored guard members as to which states they came from, I got responses of Minnesota, Florida, Ohio, and College Station. <laughs> okay. Uh, the posting of the colors uh, will be followed by the singing of our national anthem by Dr. Donna Cox, a soprano with the Congressional Chorus. The Congressional Chorus represents our co-equal branch of government, fosters American music through performances and original compositions, and supports the American Youth Chorus. Dr. Cox, we are pleased to have you join us this morning. Our anthem will be followed by the invocation to be delivered by Mr. Rizwan Shah, known as many of us as Riz, our cultural advisor here at the department. Riz is a U.S. Army veteran and an advisor and friend to all of us. So let us please stand and remain standing through the posting of the colors, the anthem, and invocation. Please proceed. Dr. Cox. Our invocation by Riz Shaw. Please bow your heads if it pleases you. Most inspirational God, we are thankful for our nation and for all of the wonderful people that live within its borders. We are grateful to those with the entrepreneurial spirit that will keep our country as a beacon of innovation. We are thankful to their families who provide the foundation from which to build an incredible and beautiful nation. We take this moment to commemorate the noble men and women of our armed forces. We commit them to your care. We faithful Americans have taken the oath to support and defend the Constitution, and we welcome to our ranks Dr. William Bookless as the Principal Deputy Administrator for the National Nuclear Security Administration. 
Dr. Christopher Fall as the Director of the Office of Science, Dr. Rita Barnwall as the Assistant Secretary for Nuclear Energy, and Mr. Lane Genetowski as the Director of Advanced Research Projects Agency Energy. They will take the good book and solemnly swear to preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution. May they carry that responsibility with the inspiration of duty, honor, country. May those words be their rallying point to build courage when courage seems to fail, to regain faith when there seems to be little cost for faith, to create hope when hope becomes forlorn. May they lead the dutiful workers of our government and always inspire in them a dedication to service, wisdom, compassion, and the will to support our nation to maintain solidarity with the Constitution. May those that serve our nation never forget a simple soldier's prayer. Let me not fail them. Amen. Please be seated. Now, before others come to speak, uh, I'm going to spend a few minutes to recognize Dr. Rita Barinwall uh, and her family. Rita, you've met the months between nomination and confirmation with un unquenchable cheerfulness and unshakable confidence, uh, with incredible professionalism and unwavering commitment to serve. I joked with her saying, you know, we have some of the smartest scientists in the world that can write the best forward-looking algorithms to figure out the most complex things, and we have invested in the biggest high-performance computers, exascale computing, and yet we have yet to figure out a way to predict when the U.S. Senate can get around to confirm four unanimously confirmed conferees. I also recognize really the love and the sacrifice that your family uh, has willingly made throughout your career, and now, as they will unlikely have to continue to make as you embark uh, in the role of Assistant Secretary for Nuclear Energy. So, uh, Peter, Sanjay, and Amiya, really thank you for your support, thanking you in advance of your uh, support and patience uh, as we now utilize the true gifts that you know that your mother has uh, and your wife has when they, or now that she's serving uh, our department. This expression of commitment to professionalism and dedication again, reminds us that we need to continue to renew our commitments uh, to serve. Rita, your talent and experience is exactly what we need at the helm of nuclear energy. Um, I would like to give a shout out to Ed McGinnis, uh, who has led your department um, throughout the the years, I mean, frankly, I guess I can say years of waiting for your confirmation. Um, and I think he hands the office over to you uh, in good shape, but we really are looking forward to your, uh, to your vision and your ideas on how to move it uh, even further. Uh, there are many reasons why you've heard the Secretary talk about the importance of uh, our civilian nuclear energy. It's critical to our world. It's clean, 24-7, reliable electricity. It's resilient. Nuclear uh, also provides us the medical isotopes, navy, naval propulsion, space exploration. Uh, so all of this will take incredible leadership, tenacity, steadfast reserve, and of course, uh, vision. Uh, you have quite a pedigree, uh, MIT undergraduate and master's PhD from University of Michigan. Um, Lisa, I think you'll be pleased uh, to know that Big Blue will be uh, represented quite well in, uh, in, our, in our area. Um, you've worked in the private industry. You've served as the director of Gateway for Accelerated Innovation in Nuclear, our GAIN program at the Idaho National Lab. And so we are looking forward to your bringing your vision uh, to fruition and continued support of a strong and prosperous America powered by this clean, affordable, and secure energy. Uh, and you will have the support of all of us at the department. And I think we can all uh, resoundingly s say that America is back in the nuclear energy game. So thank you. We will next hear from the Undersecretary for Nuclear Security and Administrator of the National Nuclear Security Administration, Lisa Gordon Haggerty. Lisa, would you come up?
Thank you, Under Secretary Menzies. And good morning, everyone. Recently, the world celebrated the 75th anniversary of the successful Allied landings at Normandy on D-Day. One of the unsung leaders instrumental to that operation success was General Eisenhower's deputy, General Walter Bedell Smith, who handled all administrative duties for the Supreme Commander. General Smith, better known as Beadle, was serving in, in, in the Secretary's Office of General Staff in Washington, D.C. And in 1942, when Ike asked him to be transferred to become his Chief of Staff to North Africa, Eisenhower later wrote about Beadle to a friend. I wish I had a dozen like him. If I did, I would simply buy a fishing rod and write home every week about my wonderful accomplishments in winning the war. Although this analogy is imperfect for Bill swearing in today as the principal deputy administrator for at the NNSA, it is as a result for two reasons. First, I don't fish. <laughs> However, second, Beetle Smith was also known as Eisenhower's, well, let's just say he was Eisenhower's guy. But I don't think anyone here who has worked with Dr. Buchlis for the past 35 years in the nuclear security enterprise, whether as a physicist at the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory, during his time as assistant laboratory director at Brookhaven National Laboratory, or here at NNSA as a senior advisor for policy, wouldn't describe him as knowledgeable, effective, and professional. And we truly need a dozen like him. I think the analogy also holds an essential point, namely that Bill is more than capable of supporting the management and operation of the NNSA. He will be an invaluable supporter of, on policy matters across the Department of Energy and NNSA Enterprise as we work to execute the full range of NNSA's missions and to support President, Trump, President Trump's and Secretary Berry's nuclear security agenda. Everyone here has experienced the challenges and sometimes the frustrations inherent in working with the DC bureaucracy. However, we all understand that these difficulties can be offset by the opportunity to work with some truly gifted people. And Bill Bookless is one of those individuals. His reputation for intelligence, professionalism, and commitment to service precedes him. He is both the perfect addition to and the epitome of NNSA's world-class workforce, whether it's here in Washington or throughout our labs, plants, and sites. I hope everyone here is as excited as I am to welcome him to the NNSA team as we continue to execute our important work together. So Bill, welcome, congratulations, welcome on board, and congratulations to our other honorees today. This is truly an exciting day for us. So now I'd like to turn it over to Undersecretary Paul DeBar. Thank you. All right, well, thank you, Lisa. It's a pleasure to be with everyone here today. I'd like to thank the Secretary and the Deputy for the opportunity to be part of this team. And I'd like to thank my partners, Lisa and Mark, for your partnership uh, as part of this team. And of course, congratulations to all four of you who are being sworn in here today. I'm especially pleased uh, to see uh, Chris Fall uh, as our new Director of the Office of Science, as well as Lane Janitowski for the Director of ARPA-E. My suite area used to be the unofficial hanging out area for several nominees in waiting, including Chris Lane and, Com and Commissioner Bernie McNamee, who's here from FERC. And I'm finally glad to be having some peace and quiet. <laughs> so thank you, Senator, for that. Uh, uh, Chris, you're leading an office with a great history of scientific impact and one with incredible potential to do more. As you all know, the core of the department was started by a recommendation by one of the greats of science, which is Albert Einstein. The secretary has out in front of his office the original letter that Einstein wrote recommending to President FDR that the government should, quote, may, may, think, to, may think it desirable to have some permanent contact uh, maintained between the administration and the group of physicists, unquote, that Einstein was describing. From this one line, the National Lab Complex was conceived. And after the end of World War II, Vannevar Bush, who was ahead of the Manhattan Project, decided to advocate for taking this uni unique set of scientists from all over the world 
at, at the three original national labs and have them drive cutting edge science. And that is where the Office of the Science started from. Since then, there's been truly amazing uh, expanding bounds of knowledge for humanity that came out of the complex. Fermi, Lawrence, Seaborg, Teller, and Rickover started programs that transformed the understanding and our workings of the universe. More than 40% of all the Nobel Prizes in physics and 25% of all the Nobel Prizes in the world from chemistry have been associated with people who did research in our, in our national labs. We co-led the Human Genome Project, detected the neutrino, developed a better understanding of dark energy and dark matter, and how the Big Bangs, quarks, and gluons combine to create the universe. And we have been at the uh, front end of supercomputing since the advent of supercomputing. These are truly exciting advances for humanity. No one here in this room can ever wonder if what we work on every day makes a difference for humankind. And it's not just what, what, what we do directly, but the world follows us. What we lead motivates university researchers, companies, and children on the expanse of what can be dreamed of and accomplished. Today, we, Chris, you, the Office of Science, and the whole team of the whole department will now have the challenge of building on that history. Some of the next frontier research, Chris, that you now are in charge of include looking at batteries that could be three to five times more productive uh, than the ones that are here today, techniques in precision medicine and gene editing that will allow us to produce precise medicines and to solve currently untreatable ailments such as TBI, new facilities to research mysterious neutrinos, which may help us to understand why matter itself exists building the world's next supercomputers, AI to drive research across a broad area of sciences, and develop quantum technologies that have a possibility to replace the technology world, the digital technology world of today, and producing technology for space missions that will enable us to colonize the moon and Mars or even further. We all want to work on things that are great and that make a difference, and that is what you, and what everyone here in this room does every single day. And Lane, it's been a pleasure to have you in my office as a senior advisor. I'm very happy for you to lead such a unique and impactful program for energy and for the nation. And although the funding from ARPA-E is clearly helpful, what's even more impactful is that the community of energy innovation that it has spawned. We are looking forward to the great innovative potential coming under your leadership. So congratulations to you today. Uh, along with the rest of our team, you will lead us to new discoveries to ensure that the future continues to belong to the land of the free. I'd like to introduce now Secretary Perry. Secretary Perry, as everyone knows, is our 14th Secretary of Energy. Before that, he was a farmer, a rancher, a veteran of the Air Force, and the longest serving governor in Texas history. Secretary Perry. Thank you. That was uh, well done. <laughs> made me, you made me proud to be a part of the DOE team <laughs> with your remarks there. That was, you were spot on and quite an honored day to get to uh, um, be on this stage to, uh, uh, to officially honor uh, these uh, men and that woman uh, that's uh, going to continue with the, uh, the legacy of, of this uh, uh, this organization, and uh, they are, um, you know, I was just thinking that uh, um, as the, through my life, 40-something years of public service, I've had the great privilege to um, get, get credit uh, for some great organizations that I worked with, uh, great accomplishments. And um, I just always was gifted in being able to have really talented people around me, uh, whether it was at the Department of Agriculture, whether it was as the Lieutenant Governor of Texas, whether it was <clears throat> the 14 years I spent as the, uh, the Governor of Texas, and, and, and we did some pretty powerful things. But um, Paul, just sitting here listening to you and, and, and thinking about, uh, you know, 
what uh, you all have accomplished already and what you will accomplish, and I get to take credit for it. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> but in all in all seriousness, I'm I'm really proud to be a part of this team and and to get to work with uh, people like you. <laughs> Some of you long suffering. <laughs> I think about. Um, Chris has been nominated for more than a year. Uh, we were laughing about somebody taking nine months. It was kind of like, you know, like a, a pregnancy. It was taking for so long, and you've been here for a year. You're like a whale. Uh, uh, it's kind of taking a really long time. So, uh, but anyway, I'm very grateful for your patience and your family's patience. Uh, doctor, thank you for your patience in this as well and uh, for your unfailing cheerfulness. Um, I'm not sure I've ever seen you without a smile on your face. And that's a, uh, that's a real gift, <laughs> particularly <coughs> having to put up with uh, some of the things you have to put up with, uh, not saying anything about anybody on the Hill. Um, <laughs> anyway, it's, you know, just a, a number of experiences have, have brought you all here, all of us for that matter. We kind of, um, you know, you, you think about running a lab, um, being a professor, acting as a chief scientist for the Office of Naval Research, overseeing defense programs for the White House, Office of Science and Technology Policy, uh, leading ARPA-E for a while, most recently, um, advising Undersecretary Menzies, who uh, um, we uh, enjoy daily. Uh, a, uh, he, he's not segregated over here for any other reason, but that's where they put his um, a number of degrees, MBA, PhD in neuroscience. Um, and all of this will be incredibly important uh, during um, your tenure as director of the Office of Science. Not only will you be overseeing those uh, Ten labs, uh, ten great national labs. I mean, I, I, I tell people on a regular basis that uh, uh, these truly are um, unique. They're, 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 we're so blessed in this country to, uh, to have those laboratories, to have that uh, intellect, and, and uh, um, you're going to be making sure that we continue to be a leader in exascale computing and uh, uh, the next generation after that um, play a crucial role in DOE's effort to promote you know, technology transfer. Um, and, and we're already doing a lot in those areas, but, um, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to push you. Uh, you know that, but I think you'll – I'm going to see if I can take the smile off your face. <laughs> Not really, not really. But I'm, I'm a, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna challenge each of you. Um, but particularly, you and in that area, that's the the potential that's there is is it's it's stunning. Um, we, you know, we're we're not gonna lead the world uh, just by simply making a new discovery or developing a new technology. Uh, as you know, at your time at ARPA E. Uh, one of the most valuable things that we can do is look for new ways for the government to support science and technology and, and new models of, of innovation uh, that will increase our, our impact. Um, and uh, you'll, you're in charge. And uh, I'm excited about the future, and, and I look forward to being a partner with you as, as, as we, uh, um, we go forward. And... Uh, and speaking of ARPA E, Lane, we're delighted you're with us today, and and uh, the uh, as the agency's new director, uh, you work for some of our leading investment bankers, um, including uh, Kinder and Peabody and J.P. Morgan and Leta Energy Sector Investment from more than 45 states, and and uh, I think spent a pretty good amount of time in the great state of Texas. Um, in, in the last 10 years or so, so we trained him up right to, to, to bring him in here. So um, he's um, 
he's he's got the renewable portfolio and the nuclear portfolio and the oil and natural gas portfolio so i mean i i'm telling you um as you open up the book and say here's the description of somebody that needs to come run that part you uh they got your picture there um you also know how to accelerate the, the movement of innovations and intellectual property to the marketplace so uh, those are going to be really essential skills for the success of, of what you're going to be doing. And as we continue to fulfill the mission of RPE, um, I hope you're going to discover new ways to uh, um, accelerate our AI capabilities and, and uh, continue to reinvent the ways that we do science and, and technology. Um, and, uh, you know, we're, we're going to take things that people didn't think were possible and, and, and show that they are possible and make new ideas into reality. I mean, I, I think that's, that's one of the reasons I got the most interesting job in government, to, to get to work at the Department of Energy, because of the, this fascinating portfolio uh, that we get to work in, and each of you uh, are a part of that. Um, Rita, as, as you've uh, noted, innovation's also at the heart of what you do in uh, the, the nuclear side of things. And, and um, you come to us from Massachusetts and, and uh, Michigan. I know uh, it was all Lisa could do not to stand up and lead a, a Michigan cheer when uh, we were talking about, uh, about your part of your background. Um, you worked over at Westinghouse in the nuclear fuels uh, division. You directed uh, the gateway for accelerated uh, innovation and nuclear uh, initiative uh, while out at Idaho. And uh, you also helped develop advanced nuclear propulsion fuels for the Navy. Uh, and in doing so, gained a very keen appreciation uh, for the essential role that nuclear power plays in our national security. You understand um, the nuclear energy sector's challenges. Uh, the needs that, that we have, and, and even more the possibilities it offers to create uh, a future of clean and secure and, and reliable uh, energy. Um, just a little asterisk, but you're the uh, first woman to lead the uh, Office of Nuclear Energy as Assistant Secretary, and um, I'm very proud of that uh, as a, a participant in, in that. So. We, uh, we welcome your leadership um, as we strive to revive and revitalize <clears throat> our nuclear energy industry and, um, you know, continue to send the message about uh, that, that America truly is committed to a cleaner and greener world of opportunity and security. So important as um, are all of our efforts at DOE, Perhaps nothing is more profound or meaningful than the work we do in protecting our nation's security. Uh, and Bill, that's why I'm so pleased that you're going to be serving at uh, NNSA. Um, what uh, you and Lisa um, together are an incredible team. And, uh, and frankly, I'm just glad to get you out of our end of the hall. Uh, <laughs> lurking around down there and, and no, seriously, we're, we're, this is like, oh my God. <laughs> Get, this whole process is fascinating, isn't it? I tell you, for a guy that comes from state government here, and it's kind of like, oh, geez. And so, anyway, we got it done. So that's, and, and we're farther along than so many other agencies. So I'm just kind of like, so I go and brag about them now. I see, uh, uh, I see. Uh, Leader McConnell's wife from time to time and, and Secretary Chow and I tell her I said well how are you making it along with your appointments and I tell her where we are and she's kind of like hmm <laughs> so anyway we're proud to get to uh, have Bill uh, have a office of his own and uh, but anyway 35 years of nuclear security experience uh, as the principal deputy administrator uh, three decades at Lawrence Livermore and uh, Brookhaven, senior advisor at NNSA. I mean, the, the, if, if, there was a, if there was a book that described uh, what a leader and, and the, uh, uh, the deputy should look like, 
your picture would be there. Uh, I truly believe that. And with all your colleagues, uh, you know, we're just counting on your years of experience, your acumen, your personality, good looks, and, and uh, et cetera, to pay real dividends for us. So, um, and um, I'm incredibly proud to get to work with every one of you. Uh, this is a, we, we now have the team put together. Um, as as we, we like to say, the, the band is now uh, together. And uh, the, the music's going to be beautiful. Uh, it's going to be a symphony. Uh, this is a fabulous group of men and women getting to work with a, a, a team of folks that uh, um, the, the sky's the limit. Um, and uh, I'm proud to be a part of it. I look forward to uh, um, literally historic moments that the Department of Energy is going to be involved with, and it will be because of the men and women uh, that have been assembled and a substantial number of them right here in this audience right now. Thank you. And now, <laughs> and now, um, we will hear from the honorees themselves. Uh, so I believe we're going to do swearing in first, then hear from the honorees themselves. Okay. So I think we're going to have all the honorees. Um, I'm going to be looking for one at a time. Okay. All right. Good. All right. Well, let me just look at the notes here that someone has prepared for me. Okay. So we are going to have, in this order, so you can prepare, uh, <laughs> Dr. Bookless, Dr. Fall, then Dr. Barinwall, and then Mr. Uh, Janitowski, okay, in that order. So come on up to the stage, right, yeah. Bring your kids, come on up, and we need y'all here on each side. Uh, Let's see. Oh, here we go. Here's all of the right. I do. Where do I stand? Um right. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, the other way. The other way. Come on this side. Oh, okay. This side. Oh, reach left hand right, hand, right hand. There we go. Great. <laughs> and when I say state your name, you'll just state your name. Great. I got it. Great. Perfect. <laughs> I I Bill Bookless. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. Without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully discharge and that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office of which I am about to enter. The duties of the office for which I am about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Welcome aboard. Thank you very much. Officially. Officially. Dr. Fall. <clears throat> All right. Bill showed you how to do that. That's so right. Oh, there you go. You get that. <laughs> Break your little, uh, get, get a smile off my face. <laughs> okay. okay, get serious. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I, Chris Fall, 
Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. Without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office. And I, that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office of which I am about to enter. Of which I'm about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Welcome aboard. Thank you, sir. Good job, Doctor. Excellent. Rita and family. Okay. Let's see. Come on. No, let's. Let the kids do it. Yeah. <laughs> here, y'all come on up here. Hold the Bible for your mom. Perfect. I, I Rita Barinwolf, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. Without any mental reservation of purpose or evasion. And that I will well and faithfully discharge. And that I will well and faithfully discharge. The duties of the office of which I am about to enter. The duties of the office of, of, about, of which I am about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Proud of you. Well done. Thank you. Well done. Lane. Why don't you remain on stage and give his speech and then he'll answer these questions? Okay. Perfect. Okay. I. I, Lane Genetowski. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I will take this obligation freely. That I will take this obligation freely without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. Without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. That I will well and faithfully discharge. That I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office of which I am about to enter. The duties of the office of which I am about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Welcome aboard. Thanks. Thank you. We will now hear from each of our honorees, beginning with Lane. Lane. Thank you. Thanks very much. First, uh, having been born in the shadows of Yankee Stadium and standing here today, afforded the opportunity to serve my country, I can only state how deeply I appreciate the United States of America. I want to thank my wife, Robin, for her love and leadership throughout our marriage and in this process as in all others, she always says, one more step. Thank you. Uh, I'm deeply grateful for the efforts of everyone who's been here and I've been here for quite a while. So I've got a lot of people to thank individually so I'd like to all thank you just in a group. Thank you all for pulling on the oar that got me here where I am today. In particular, I'd like to mention Under Secretary DeBarra. It's my good fortune to be able to say I've known him and his family for 20 years. He enthusiastically suggested ARPA to me. There have been times when I was doubting that, but I will say that he's always spun me back up. <laughs> no problem. He's been unfailing in his support of my candidacy, and I couldn't ask for a better professional, colleague, or friend. With regard to ARPA-E, I haven't been allowed in the building yet, so I can't tell a lot. What I can tell you is I arrived late last evening from their 10th summit, their innovation summit, and the people in the work that they're doing is impressive beyond description. It'll be an honor and a challenge for me to work as their director, and I do say to you I will do my best every day. And I'd like to introduce now Dr. Rita Barrenwall.
Thank you very much. Uh, it is my true privilege to be able to uh, fulfill this role. Um, I want to thank my family very much for putting up with uh, the uncertainty of this process thus far, so I appreciate that. Um, and I do want to give a few remarks on nuclear energy. Um, it's a really important part of our diverse domestic energy portfolio. Um, our power plants are critical to this nation's energy security. Nuclear is one of the most reliable and resilient sources of electricity generation and it operates over 90% of the time. The plants run 24-7. They keep our electri electricity prices stable regardless of whether it's a nice, sunny, hot, humid day outside or whether we're in a polar vertex. Nuclear energy is also critical to our national security and that's something that's very unique to this type of electricity generation. Maintaining and strengthening the U.S. global leadership through a strong domestic nuclear sector is the only way to ensure our non-proliferation, safety, and security objectives are met as the rest of the world works very, very aggressively to expand their nuclear capabilities. Nuclear energy also helps to ensure economic prosperity, and it's of particular interest at the state and local levels, where nuclear power plants are typically major economic drivers of their local communities. For example, a single, single nuclear power plant generates four to 700 jobs in the community at salaries that are substantially higher than the average level. They contribute tens of millions of dollars in state and local taxes, and that doesn't even include the significant philanthropic contributions that are made by the utilities and their employees to those local communities. And of course, I have to remind all that Nuclear is the single largest source of clean energy, and it has a very extremely important role to play to ensure our environmental sustainability. I am excited and privileged to continue the excellent progress that the Department and the Office of Nuclear Energy have been making to meet the President's challenge, as we heard earlier, to revive, revitalize, and expand the nation's nuclear energy sector. Sustaining the existing fleet by developing and implementing both policy and technical solutions to improve the economics of our operating nuclear power plants while also ensuring their long-term sustainability is extremely important. At the same time, we also need to be focusing on advanced reactor technologies, such as small modular reactors and micro reactors. And we need to make sure that we get them over the finish line as quickly as possible but that's especially important because we have a rapidly growing international market. This area will be one of my top priorities. We also need to place a major emphasis on fuel cycle infrastructure to ensure that these advanced reactors have the fuel and experimental capabilities that they need. And we should also make every effort to maximize our resource utilization. Getting advanced reactors to market and providing multiple technology options will help enhance our global competitiveness as well but it has to be combined with a whole of government approach to addressing the policy, regulatory, and financial challenges that must be overcome to allow us to compete with other countries who are frankly currently offering comprehensive deals that we just can't match today. NE is making significant progress in, in many of these areas and I also would like to thank Ed McGinnis for his leadership over the past few years. I look forward to continuing the great work of the office as well as moving a few additional priorities forward as well. Thank you very much, and I'd like to introduce Dr. Chris Fall. Got a couple of pages, but it's really big type, so. So uh, thank you all uh, for coming to join us uh, for the event today. I'm, I'm not a big ceremony person, particularly when it's about myself, but I understand as I think the four of us do uh, today that it's, it's really not about me. In the case of the Office of Science, uh, it's about the 800 or so career staff who administer the office here at headquarters, the field offices, uh, the service centers, and the folks up at Germantown, and the 23,000 other women and men who make up those 10 national labs that the Secretary talked about. Uh, I know that they appreciate, as I do, that the President recognize the importance of what they do by nominating a director, and they also uh, appreciate the Senate for evaluating that choice and, and giving a stamp of their approval. Uh, it took a while. There was a lot of that evaluating. Um, 
but that's how the process works, and, and now we're moving on to do great things. So thank you, Mr. Secretary, for the opportunity to serve on their behalf and on behalf of the American people who at the end of the day make all the amazing things that we do in the Office of Science uh, possible. I will say it's true that the, the wait and the uncertainty were a little bit challenging. Uh, when you have kids who are old enough, my kids are at camp or they'd be here today, uh, they're old enough to start wondering about the world in a serious way. They kind of want to know what their dad or mom does for a living. Uh, when you say, well, kids, it's a little complicated. Uh, this week, I'm, you know, this week I'm the senior advisor kind of thing. It, it, uh, it's tough to explain that to them, uh, but it, it's fine. They're okay with it. And, and I owe the biggest thanks, of course, to my wife, Sandy, to agreeing to this journey. Uh, there were some serious discussions uh, about that and for being incredibly supportive uh, throughout the whole time. Uh, you're amazing. So it's, it's true that it was difficult. The Secretary mentioned uh, my smiling a lot. I, didn't, I hadn't thought about that. But uh, Mr. Secretary, it's also true that uh, during this wait, I've enjoyed every single minute of my time at the Department of Energy. If I may, I think it was brilliant uh, to allow me to run ARPA-E for a while. To paraphrase you, the Office of Science might be the most important job I have, but running ARPA-E was the coolest. Uh, ARPA-E does amazing science and technology, but as I tell almost everyone who listens, it's, it's the, the laboratory for reinventing government is, is the other half of that story, and I can take those lessons will, with me to the Office of Science. Uh, Lane, you have a great, a really great team to look forward to. And then you assigned me to work with Under Secretary Menzies. Uh, you know, by the time you're in your 50s, you kind of think you know what's what in the world. Uh, so, what a gift, uh, what a gift really, and I mean this sincerely, uh, to kind of smugly think that I had things all, you know, all figured out, after all, what's, what's more important than science, right? And then uh, suddenly find myself working for and learning from someone who's truly, you know, playing 3D chess to my checkers. Uh, during my time with Undersecretary Menzies and his team, I learned more about things I'd never heard of before uh, in, in, than in any other six month uh, period of time in my life. Well, maybe it was eight or nine months, <laughs> but who's counting? So thank you, sir, and thank you to your fantastic team. I see some of them here for taking me in like that and for educating me about the other levels uh, of the energy mission beyond what we do in science and technology. It was humbling and I'm grateful for the experience. Uh, so I don't have to tell you, you heard uh, Undersecretary DeBar's uh, speech. I don't have to tell you that he's excited about science and technology. All you have to do is walk down the seventh floor hallway and every once in a while you hear an excited giggle coming out of the, coming out of the Undersecretary's suite. Um, it's genuine and it's infectious. And uh, he set out a really great vision what we're, about what we're going to accomplish together. I couldn't be more aligned with him and I couldn't be more uh, thrilled to work for him pushing forward the science mission, uh, which, which is, in fact, very important to the country. So, uh, What many of you don't know, and I'll wind this up, is uh, because everyone here is crazy busy with the other missions of the Department of Energy, uh, as the Secretary mentioned, I've, I've had a few experiences in other places in science and technology in the government. The Office of Science is the envy of the rest of the science and technology establishment in the federal government, and indeed the world. Uh, um, for how it executes programs, sets priorities, and builds uh, and, and operates the most uh, remarkable science facilities ever conceived. Um, it's staffed by brilliant and dedicated public servants, and what they do for the country and the rest of the world is, is nothing less than profound. Mr. Secretary, I couldn't be more honored to be a part of it, and I would, uh, I would be remiss if I didn't, uh, as, as Rita did mention, that uh, Dr. Steve Binkley performed a heroic service uh, through the transition and over these many months expertly managing uh, the Office of Science. He's a great example of the phenomenal career folks uh, that we have here who, who fulfill the mission every day. So my congratulations to Bill and Rita and my good friend Lane. I look forward to working with all of you and I'd like to introduce the Honorable Bill Bookless.
I have a couple pages as well, but it's also big type. Um, it's an honor to be here to celebrate with Chris and Lane and Rita. Um, and I know I'll, I'll be quick because I know I'm kind of standing between you and lunch. So uh, it's a pleasure to have my daughter and my son-in-law, Michael, here with me today. And my, uh, I also appreciate tremendously the support I've gotten from my wife, who is back in California, and my daughter, Stephanie, who is in Chicago. I want to thank the administrator first for um, asking me to be part of an incredible team that she's assembled. And I want to thank the secretary for supporting her recommendation and for allowing me to be part of the team that uh, is made up by the tremendous dedicated people in the Department of Energy. Um, I've been involved in this kind of work for over 40 years, and this is a, just a wonderful way to uh, assist this dedicated group of people in trying to uh, realize the goals that we have as a nation to protect the nation through our national security uh, uh, approaches. And the 44,000 people that make up the National Nuclear Security Administration are the part of the team that many people in, in, um, on the Hill don't see. And I think that uh, when they understand the kind of dedication and accomplishment that occurs every day at our labs, plants, sites, all around the country, um, it just makes the jobs that the four of us have uh, all the more rewarding. The secretary has uh, always said that he thinks he has one of the coolest jobs in, uh, in town here. I think I've got a pretty cool job too. And uh, as NNSA continues to support the nation's nuclear weapons stockpile, the nation's uh, nonproliferation goals and emergency response responsibilities, and in designing and delivering the uh, power, the propulsion systems for the nuclear Navy, uh, I'm just thrilled to be part of the team that will assure that delivery with the highest integrity. And so uh, before I get off the stage, I, I had two quotes that I thought were very um, applicable for all of us today, but me in particular, that we find comfort among those who agree with us, but we, with growth through those that don't. I think it's important for us to be open about things. And then the second quote is, we don't have to agree in order to be kind to one another. And I think that that is the spirit that I'd like to see us all embrace here in the Department of Energy and within the nuclear, uh, NNSA. So with that, I will introduce Under Secretary Menzies, or reintroduce <laughs> Under Secretary Menzies. Well, thank you very much uh, for coming. That's, this concludes our program, and as the Secretary said, uh, we now have all of our uh, appointees confirmed. I think we're number one in that department, uh, so our department is number one. And I do believe I do believe that it is a tribute to the people in this room, uh, the leadership of Secretary Perry, the Under Secretary, Deputy Secretary Bruyette. I think that uh, the Senate, I think, is very pleased. Um, with the direction uh, that we're moving in, and I think it's a tribute to everybody in this room that we now have our full complement of conferees uh, confirmed. So thank you all for coming, uh, and this concludes our program this morning. Thank you.